Newport News in Review with Aaron Pritchett starts right now. I'm Aaron Pritchett and welcome to this edition of Newport News in Review for the month of February 2012. Well, the shortest month of the year just got a little longer. Well, only by one day, thanks to 2012 being a leap year, but that one extra day gives us a little extra time of sorts to focus in on the past, present, and the future as we celebrate Black History Month. And here in the city of Newport News, you don't have to look too far because there's plenty of special people and places to celebrate. From the likes of prominent lawyer Joseph Thomas Newsom, actress singer Pearl Bailey, the first lady of song Ella Fitzgerald, and one very special place that not only bears the name of one important African American U.S. Navy hero, but one that continues to shine bright for the young and the young at heart for more than 60 years. As we bring this show to you from the Doris Miller Community Center, located right here at 28th Street and Wickham Avenue in the heart of the Southeast community of Newport News. <music> A beacon of hope, an institution, a community fixture. But no matter what you decide to call it, it's a place that has dedicated itself to providing a wide array of leisure services and worthwhile programs to help nurture and lead all who enter the doors of the Doris Miller Community Center in the Southeast community of Newport News. But it's a facility that almost never was, especially during a time when racial segregation was alive and well. Blacks were separated from whites, and whites were usually the ones enjoying the finer things of the times. That included their very own recreation building located at 28th Street and Wickham Avenue called the World War II Recreation Center, a center that was built in 1945 and even included their own outdoor pool. But things were about to change. As attorney Hale Thompson and his coalition of concerned Negro citizens of the community came together and helped to push forward the construction of a recreation center that would help meet the needs of the black community. So in August of 1948, construction began at 3100 Wickham Avenue, which was right down the street from the White Recreation Center. And brick by brick, this facility soon took shape. And by July 5th, 1949, the building was completed and included a stage, several multi-purpose rooms, and even a soda fountain. But there was one thing missing, a name. So thanks to a building naming contest, it was dedicated as the Dory Miller Recreation Center in honor of Doris Dory Miller, a man who was born in Texas and trained nearby in Norfolk for the U.S. Navy, and eventually made a name for himself on Sunday, December 7, 1941, with a sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. As this mess attendant second class sprung into action aboard the USS Arizona and rescued not only the ship's captain from the bridge, but quickly rushed to an unmanned and unfamiliar machine gun and successfully shot down four attacking Japanese planes. Because of his bravery and heroism, Doris Miller became the first African-American sailor to earn the U.S. Navy Cross, the Navy's second highest honor. Unfortunately, he was later killed while serving aboard the USS Liscombe Bay after it was struck and sunk by a Japanese submarine on November 24, 1943. So the name Dory Miller was indeed a fitting tribute to this long-awaited facility. And as time wore on and relations improved, the Dory Miller Recreation Center moved out of its building at 31st Street and Wickham Avenue, the current home of the C. Waldo Scott Center for Hope, and right next door into the former World War II Recreation Center and the current location of what is today the Doris Miller Community Center. A wonderful place that has become intricately interwoven into the fabric of Newport News, where the doors are always open, excitement is in the air, and plenty of activities to enjoy. From after school homework help and time on computers, to a chance to sit down and enjoy a warm meal. And of course, plenty of interactive games and recreational opportunities that help exercise the body and the mind. And if making a splash is your thing, well you can take the plunge in their very popular pool and water park which provides youth and families the perfect place to cool off during the sweltering heat of summer. Not to be outdone, this facility not only entertains the young, but also the young at heart, thanks to the Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism's active lifestyle program. 
that provides a wide variety of fun activities and programs, which enables them to socialize, reminisce, and yes, even play some pretty intense rounds of bingo. G53. Bingo. All right. So whether you're six or 106, the Doris Miller Community Center continues to be a shining light in this community, providing generation after generation a positive and safe environment to experience. Thanks to a constant supply of love, laughter, and a wealth of recreational opportunities that are available each and every day at this fine facility throughout the year. We are proud to feature the Doris Miller Community Center, and we encourage you to see for yourself all the fine educational and recreational programs that are offered at this fine facility, as they remain committed in offering a positive and safe place for the young and the young at heart to enjoy throughout the year. Well, February has been another busy month, so let's take a look at what's been going on right here in the city of Newport News. First, the bad news. Gas prices continue to rise, and it's certainly no fun filling up at the pump. Now the good news, and there's plenty of it, as the Newport News Williamsburg International Airport offers up an exciting alternative when it comes to traveling, and all eyes are to the skies, thanks to expanded service, news service, and a big announcement that will change the way we fly here in Hampton Roads. Opening day is a whole lot closer than you think, and as you can see, I'm not talking about baseball as a brand new facility is taking shape and well on its way to bringing a whole new and exciting way for one community to come together and recreate like never before. And it's a test that only a few pass, one that puts the heart, mind, and body through its paces. And of course, it doesn't hurt to be able to be cool under pressure. But if these police officers want to join one of the most elite teams within the department, they'll dig down deep and do whatever it takes to succeed. You never know until you try. Now, of course, you have to be physically fit, mentally prepared, and ready to expect the unexpected, knowing full well there are no guarantees that you'll even make the team. But this, of course, is no ordinary team, because they're the best of the best, extremely talented, quite precise, and more than willing to go into some of the most highly stressful and dangerous situations when called upon at any given hour of the day and night. And we recently caught up with the Newport News Police Department's Tactical Operations Unit on base at Fort Eustis as they held tryouts for interested officers within the department who are ready to take that initial next step in their careers by putting their hearts, minds, and bodies to the ultimate test. I want to thank you guys for coming out today. Um, it's not going to be easy, and we're going to be watching each and everything you guys do. So stay focused and good luck. We are starting right now. You need to be over there by the pull-up bars in PT gear in 10 minutes. All together, come on. Normally, uh, minimum is basically 18 months into the job off probation. There's an application process where when we have openings on the team, we'll, we'll send out a department-wide announcement where any officer who feels they're qualified can submit an application through the chain of command. Once that is approved, they're given an opportunity to come out on a day like this as such today and uh, compete in the TLU Tactical Operations Unit Trials which is a rigorous, multifaceted process that involves shooting, tactical abilities, and physical agility testing. It's a PT portion of our test. About a year, year and a half ago, we went to the National Tactical Officer Association standard. This is a nationwide standard for our PT test. It includes five pull-ups as a minimum, 30 push-ups in two minutes, 30 sit-ups in two minutes, and a two-mile run in 20 minutes. the very beginning of being a member of the department's 911, the department's elite tactical unit uh, here in Newport News. We only can accept the best of the best. We appreciate, you know, the enthusiasm and all those that come out and, and, and try out. There are some that at times do not make it on the first time. So we counsel and encourage them and uh, work with those that don't make it and offer them opportunities to come back at a later date. And uh, we offer various different uh, open range opportunities throughout the year so they can practice their skills and work to get better and hopefully they'll make it next time. It's 
very difficult process. The last couple uh, tryouts we've had, we've only had one, maybe two at the most uh, completed um, to where they were brought onto the team. So it's very difficult. A lot of people don't realize how, how tough it is. Come on, keep it up, guys. Keep it up. We try to cheer each candidate on, and uh, you know, we always uh, thank them at the end for coming out and trying out because we want good applicants to come and, and try out for the team, and we want them on the team. However, they do have to meet a certain uh, physical and uh, certain level of accomplishments in order to uh, to be a tackle operator. Next phase of the tryouts is going to be the combat shooting course. You guys will have two opportunities to go through the course today to complete it. You have to complete it with minimum 90%. If you guys fail to follow any of the instructions that I give you when we go out there, you're done. All right, right here, face down range, load and charge. Load and charge, yes, sir. The combat shooting portion of the tryouts is about the hardest thing that the uh, person trying out for the team will encounter. Load and charge. All right, and that is the uh, amount of stress that we put on them. We get it! Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. They're, they're already physically tired from the, the run, the, the pull-ups, the sit-ups. Run across the parking lot, had to do it, ton more, 10 more push-ups, and then low crawl. It's just, just a real gut check. All right, got it. But then they're forced to uh, take up different shooting positions at different yardages. And they're required to follow a s specific set of directions all the way through. And if they fail to follow those directions exactly, then they are DQ'd right there, disqualified, and the next person comes down the line. Um, it's pretty hard. This is my actual second time trying through. I tried through uh, um, a couple months ago, didn't make it, uh, didn't get through on the shooting part, but uh, it's a tough it's a tough process. It's not for everybody, and uh, I mean, I've been training for it since the last time. We tried to get through this time, so. To me, it's great. I mean, I always wanted to be a police officer. I had the opportunity to be a police officer, and one of my goals is to get on tech team. And hopefully, if I make it, uh, it's nothing but going upward from there. I'm very proud of our guys. The main reason is it, it takes a lot of dedication. Uh, your personal life can become greatly affected by it, and it, it takes uh, it just takes a lot all the way around for our guys to uh, stay on a team that demands so much of you and the uh, citizens of Newport News should be proud of each and every person on the tactical team, but also proud of the fact that this is the police department and we're doing everything we can to be the best that we can be to serve the community. There's something new on the horizon something that's actually been in the works for quite some time. And although there's several people out there that thought it would never happen, well, let's just say all that changed in the spring of 2010 on the former site of Denby Toyota. As shovels dug into the ground to mark the beginning of the new Denby Community Center along Warwick Boulevard and Curtis Tigner Road. And brick by brick, we are one step closer to making this long-awaited center for the northern end of the city a reality. It's been about five to seven years since it's been in discussion about getting this facility up and going. And we had several community meetings where we um, had discussion on what type of activities and all should be in there, which helped us in the design work with the architects. And it's been about 18 months since we started construction and, and had the ground breaking and finally to reality. And he, here we are just a few months away from it being completed. Well, we use the schools in so many centers. Um, you know, we're in about 20 different schools um, with different programs and activities. Plus, we have five or six of our centers. But truly, with uh, between Doris Miller and Brittingham uh, Midtown, they're the only true recreation centers we have in the city. And this will be the third, which will give us geographically some in each part of the city. Well, it's, uh, it's our second time around doing it. We did it with Brittingham Midtown a few years ago. It's exciting because just having something new, we've had 40 and 50 year old buildings that we've been working out of and making them all multi-purpose. Um, uh, being able to design from the beginning with the needs of your community and just having uh, the space and the, uh, the, the new technology that's out there. I mean, some of the gaming centers that we'll have in this particular facility are gonna be state of the art. The gymnasium's all gonna be wireless. Um, uh, we'll be able to have large scale, not only athletic events, but dances and and even particular small mini conferences. I mean, we could have a couple thousand people theoretically in a double gymnasium um, to do a type of meeting or um, recital, those type of things. Right now, we're looking at uh, the construction should be completed sometime in the late summer, early fall. 
Um, we want to have a soft opening because um, it will take time to get all the equipment in and making sure everything's up and running. Uh, we'll probably do a soft opening sometime in, in September, October time frame. Um, my guess is by the first of the year we'll be 100% fully operational, uh, but there'll be things going on here you'll be seeing um, any time this fall. It's really great to be able to work with the city of Newport News. And, you know, having a good team is everything on building a building this size. You start off with the foundation and you're doing the rough ends, the slabs, masonry's going up, there's electrical, plumbing all going in the walls at the same time. So there's a lot of trades, a lot of things happening at once. And uh, it's just keeping a good eye on everything and uh, just knowing everything that's going on around you. You get quite intense as an inspector, quality and control inspector for the city of Newport News. I have to make sure that we get the Cadillac that we paid for and not only the transportation bicycle that's required by code. So yes, we upgraded quite a bit. You know, we make sure whatever happens on the project that we pay the proper amount for the product that we get and vice versa. Uh, I found myself a lot of times uh, reviewing issues on the job and find that there are avenues where we can save a little bit of money. And that's what we will always try to do, to, to make sure, again, like I say, to get a good product. I take a lot of pride in that, uh, and in making sure that everything is, is built to, to not only aesthetically, but also for the safety of the children. Something like this right here is really going to mean a lot for, for the kids up at the North End. And, and like I say, when you drive by after it's done, you know, and you spend years of driving by, say, I had something to do with that. It just, it just gives you a very good sense of pride, you know, to be able to know that you, you had some input in it and that you were able to do something for the citizenry of Newport News. They say that no news is good news. And then when you least expect it, your luck begins to change. And before you know it, you find yourself moving in a much more focused direction and actually flying quite high. And that just happens to be the case for our very own Newport News Williamsburg International Airport, as they have plenty of good news to celebrate. From the return of Frontier Airlines with a much more expanded seasonal year-round schedule to Denver, Colorado, to the recent addition of Allegiant Airlines to the Orlando Sanford, Florida market, and now add one more to the list. As a new startup airline was recently announced that will help position this airport, the city of Newport News, and this region for brighter skies ahead. It's an honor to have you all here today to share in the announcement of our new airlines and to recognize the value of this historic event to our community and to Hampton Roads area. It's because of our central location between Richmond and North Carolina, the convenience of the Newport News Williamsburg Airport, the first class customer service demonstrated at the airport, and the ability of our region and state to work together that we have this opportunity. Air service plays an important role in economic development, as you all know. This service will create jobs, will provide opportunities for travelers to come to Virginia Peninsula all over this region. And we welcome this opportunity. We're happy to have this opportunity. You know, it, would you take a trip you rarely ever hear anybody who talks about how cool the flight was, or how easy it was, or how enjoyable it was, or how nice the crew was. Usually the flying part is the necessary evil. Well, we want to return fun to flying again. Folks, this company will be all about the people. The people who work for us, and the people who fly with us. And we believe that it's time to teach America to fly smart again. great opportunity for the airport, the Peninsula residents, and quite frankly, everybody in Hampton Roads. People Express is going to bring a new standard of air travel uh, to the Peninsula and to other cities around the United States. We're very excited uh, to be a host of them, especially in the job creation over the next few years, basing their operation here at the airport. When AirTran announced and Southwest announced they were pulling out, there was a void there that just begging for someone to fill and we're flowing into that void, uh, we think we can, uh, we can make a wonderful success out of this business, and so we're really thrilled about it. We believe that the time is right to start this airline. We believe in the iconic brand that People Express was back in the 80s. We recognize that People Express had a very unique niche, and that was to serve secondary markets with nice aircraft, high frequency, and low fares. Somewhere along the line, that niche 
kind of got lost. Well, we intend to stay very focused on that. We believe that there are significant markets out of Newport News that we can serve. And I think that you'll see us start with markets like Pittsburgh, Providence, Rhode Island, Newark, New Jersey, Orlando, Florida, West Palm Beach, Florida, and we have a couple others that we'll let you know later. Our service will begin sometime towards the mid-summer. We're going to fly Boeing 737-400 aircraft, so it's big jets with 158 seats, very comfortable. We will offer assigned seats, and we will not charge you for your bags. <laughs> I thank you guys for being here. People Express was a household name back in the 80s, and we're going to make it that again, and we're going to make it right here in Newport News. It's something we all want to do, and it's either we don't have the time to do it or have no clue on where to begin. But surprisingly enough, there's plenty of dedicated people out there making it happen. And here in this community, the fine staff and a long list of volunteers at the Doris Miller Community Center are truly making a difference in the lives of the young and the young at heart each and every day. The Doris Miller Community Center is uniquely positioned in the Southeast community. I and mean, it really serves the needs, wants, and interests of the Southeast community in the City of Newport News and the City of Newport News at large. It is a facility of the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. And so it is the hub, if you will, of the Southeast community. Everybody gets their start here at the Doris Miller Community Center. So no matter what walk of life you're from, if you lived in the Southeast community, you know where Doris Miller Community Center is. You know the activities that are involved here. And this is the place where they belong. There's many other places that they could be um, right here in our very own community, but they choose to be here. And so at any given moment, you can walk in Doris Miller and find that it, it's a large facility full of activity, full of exciting noises, things that would indicate high quality programming is happening right here in the Southeast community. Yeah, there you go. It means that I'm here to make a difference with the uh, young kids that come up in the East End area. A lot of them doesn't have a two person family. Therefore, when they come in here, we try to show them the right way to go. The main thing is to get them off the street. Once we get them off the street, then therefore they, wouldn't get in, they won't get in trouble. And uh, that's our main goal here, is to get them off the street and give them something positive to work on. Very good, Nevlin. Very, very good. I'm very proud of you. First thing they have to do is go and do their homework. If you don't do your homework, and if you tell one of the instructors that you don't have homework, then we give you some homework. So the uh, main thing is to get them ready for the, for the world. Doris Miller is offering a community service not only for the children but for the parents as well and it's extremely important because the academic environment here in the East End community is often challenged and our children are suffering. So in order to have them to be able to come here and to offer them things that they may not have at home such as a computer, it's, it's, they need it. It's, it's just a need and the community center makes sure that those needs are met. Ms. Wilkinson means a lot to me. She helps me with my homework if I need help, and if you need to do homework on a computer, you can do it up there. I have a lot of fun here. This is our game room. Um, a lot of action happens in this room, and this room serves multiple purposes during depending on what day of the week it is um, and what the game room attendant has planned. And so um, there's video game equipment that comes out, there's video game fitness that's involved here. Um, there are programs called switch and swap programs where every time they hear a particular sound, they swap the activity that they're doing. Um, just to keep it interesting, keep them um, rotating, keep them moving. I like Doris Miller because it's challenging and have nice people and it's fun. Game time! Let's go! Well, the main thing, a lot of them like to come in and play basketball. They like to go in there and play basketball, and when they get in there to play basketball, they have to get with Mr. Rodney Irving. All right, now, let's go! Tulu for short. He takes care of that gym and he takes care of it very well. It means the world to me, because I know for a fact don't be for Dora Miller, I might not be here myself. Because one time I was running around like they're doing now out in the streets. But messing with the kids, it, it makes my life much better. You know, and I can see positive things that we're doing for the kids here. You know, trying to keep them out of the gangs and all this crazy stuff. You know, 
So uh, the building means a, a, a hell of a lot to me. Let's go! So in addition to our day-to-day -day programming of recreation and sports activities and education, we try to instill inside of our youth participants innovative programs that are going to connect them to their past. So in an effort to do that and to create innovative programming, uh, we've come up with an example such as Ride with Rosa uh, that we're going to experience and youth will be able to experience and boarding the bus and, and reenacting of that Thursday evening uh, where Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus and they're going to learn um, about her impact on civil rights as a leader and what they can do to still keep that dream and that legacy alive. There was enough room up front for only five. One white man was left standing. So Blake, the bus driver, said, look lady, I want you to get up. We need to see for the man who is standing. I did not move. I don't know what it was, but I didn't move. And the bus driver said, if you don't get up, I will call the police. I didn't move. He said, I am going to call the police. I said, do what you need to do. I feel it's important because it's a very important part of their history. And um, it's not just she refused to give up her seat, but there is more behind the story. Uh, standing up for what you believe in, uh, having principles, morals, and values, and respect. And I think that is what she got from a lot of people. And we're going to remember all of the hard work that you did, how you helped me so that we could sit anywhere we wanted on a bus. All right, let's get ready to play some bingo. Here we go. Today we are celebrating Valentine with the oh, Valentine Valentine's Bingo. Oh and the seniors love it. This is an annual program started by Bridget Barnes. She was the Active Lifestyle Center Supervisor for the seniors here at Doris Miller. In 45, in 45. Active Lifestyle Program is dedicated solely to seniors, getting them motivated, getting them moving, getting them to even um, get with other seniors. If they are alone, if they're widowed, we want to see them active, we want to see them moving, we want them to enjoy this stage in life, and we have a lot of programs that they can come to, that they can be a part of. Bingo! I heard a bingo, all right. I can't do the soap operas, you know, and we play cards and we do bingo. We do so many things, you know. I love it. I re I'm retired from the Nuka New School System, and my friend here, she's retired. She's 90 years old, and her and I just go out every day somewhere, and we usually end up right here. G five seven. It is the most rewarding experience and feeling that one could ask for. When leaving work in the evening and going home after working a long day, it is that passion, that drive to know that I've changed at least one life or impacted at least one life in some type of way that keeps me coming back. And so it's a great place to be. Um, you can go anywhere in this community, but the place you belong is here at the Doris Miller Community Center. Well, that's about all the time we have for you this month. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Newport News in Review as we've helped to celebrate Black History Month and shine the light on all the positive things going on right here at the Doris Miller Community Center. And as always, on behalf of everyone here at Newport News TV, whether you're watching us on TV or online at nngov.com, Facebook, or YouTube, thanks for watching. And we'll see you here real soon for the March edition of Newport News in Review right here on Newport News Television.
For more information on Newport News and Review, contact Aaron Pritchett at apritchett at nngov.com.